Hello guys, Lorenzo here. In this guide, I want to show you in a straightforward way how to get good settings for your MetaQuest 3 on iRacing. I've been racing using the Quest 3 on iRacing for a couple of months. I tweaked with the settings a lot and uh, I found a combination of settings that makes me happy. A lot of you have asked me in the comments of my race videos what settings I use. So basically, here we go. Uh, bear in mind, these settings uh, work best for my system, the specifications of which uh, will be listed on the screen right now and uh, also for my visual preferences as well. So bear in mind, this is what I like, and this is what works for me, may not work for everybody, but at least I hope to be able to show you where you can change all the settings um, and what the most important ones are for quality so that you can then eventually tweak it yourself for your own system. The challenging thing with VR, the confusing thing is that there's like four different places where you can tweak your settings. So we're going to go through all these settings areas one by one, can hopefully get you up and running in VR on iRacing with the Quest 3 as quickly as possible. If you find this useful, please consider liking, consider subscribing and uh, let me know your thoughts in the comments. Let's get straight into it. So the first place where you want to go tweak your settings is the Meta Quest Link app. I tried Virtual Desktop and it did not really work for me because I could not get a high bitrate and it looked like crap. I see that works for a lot of people, didn't work for me. My headset is connected to my computer using the uh, MetaQuest link, so I'm using a wired connection that gives me uh, the highest bitrate possible, the highest quality possible, and also the best battery life that I can achieve with this headset. These are the settings that I run on Quest Link. I run my Quest 3 at 90 Hz, which uh, as a refresh rate is perfectly good. I get a stable 90 FPS and the rendering resolution go with at least one. You, you don't want to go lower than 1.0. I personally like running mine at 1.1 X, specifically 4192 by 2240. I have gone higher, I have gone up to like 1.3, however, I sometimes in certain tracks, in certain conditions, got some frame drops, even though it looked really good. 1.1 for me was the sweet spot between it looking good and getting consistent 90 FPS with almost no frame drops at all. Save this. And step number one is completed. Step number two is in the Oculus Debug tool. This tool gives you a lot more customization into the settings of your Quest 3. You can just pause the video and copy my settings, but if I am to mention a couple of settings which are absolutely crucial, the first one, you must increase the encode bitrate to at least 500. If you can, do 900. This is going to make your graphics look great. Now, you can't type in here. You have to basically write the 900 or whatever setting you go with. Again, at least 500. Write that in a notepad, on a Word file, something like that. Copy it, Control C, and then click on this and then paste it in, Control V. For some reason, that's the only way to change this. And so regarding link sharpening, I tried both normal and quality. And ironically, it looks better on normal. Quality gives me more blur in the distance. So distant objects tend to look more blurry. Um, and that's it. Once you change the setting in the MetaQuest app and in the Oculus Debug tool, the third place you wanna go to is your graphics card settings. In my case, that is done through the NVIDIA control panel. 
what you want to do is go to manage 3d settings and then you want to change program settings you don't want to mess with your global settings just change the settings specifically for eye racing so i go to program settings select a program to customize that's uh eye racing motorsport simulator make sure you select the uh, executable uh, which is the iRacing Sim 64 DX11, not the iRacing UI, so watch out with that. The settings that I changed from the default are the following. Low latency mode is set to on. Power management mode is set to prefer maximum performance. Texture filtering, anisotropic sample optimization is on. Texture filtering quality is set to high performance. Texture filtering trilinear optimization is set to on. And virtual reality pre-rendered frames is set to two. I tried a couple different things based on settings that I found online and this is what worked best for me. And now for the final bit of settings that you need to tweak, we're going to want to head into the iRacing settings and tweak a couple of things there. Let's go take a look. Now, getting into the iRacing settings, the first thing that you want to select correctly is your sim display mode. I tried Oculus and OpenXR. Oculus for me is better. With OpenXR, I get way more flickering in the distance with the exact same settings as Oculus. They both look good, but OpenXR gives me a ton of flickering for some reason. Uh, that means that I do not use the OpenXR toolkit, which is an extra layer of settings that can help gain performance. But with my system, using the OpenXR toolkit is not necessary. And even if I did want to use it, running it in OpenXR gives me a ton of flickering. So I go with Oculus. And finally, the last step, getting your eye racing settings dialed in correctly. You can uh, pause the video and copy my settings, but if you want to know more about what really made a difference for me, continue watching as I will break down the settings almost one by one and tell you what made a huge difference in terms of uh, performance and graphics in VR. So display settings, you want to copy this pretty much as it is. You want the lowest resolution, uh, you want to enable SPS, uh, the rest you pretty much want disabled. If you want to change the colors, you can mess with gamma brightness and contrast filters. Uh, this is completely up to preference. Now, when we look at the performance tab down here, as you can see, there are three columns of settings. One quite useful thing that I learned is that the settings that are here on the left do not impact performance much and you can pretty much set them to your preference in my case i turned uh, sky and clouds uh, low pit object uh, sorry event low grandstands low crowds low and objects low because you don't really look at these things very much but cars you look at cars all the time pit objects you look at them all the time and particles with the latest uh, particles update uh, I like to see them too in uh, in high detail. So um, uh, cars, pit objects, and particles to high detail. But uh, for uh, particles, uh, you don't wanna you don't wanna take full resolution. I mean, if your system can run it, you can. With me, I can have my particles in full resolution. Like that's fine. Uh, but I do get some frame drops sometimes when there's a lot of uh, gravel or grass uh, flying around uh, the track. So. Uh, yeah, I have it on ticked because uh, they still look really good anyway. Max cars, uh, 4020 uh, for both. Dynamic LOD world only. Um, frame rate limit, no limit. And uh, max pre rendered frames, one. So, yeah, that's pretty much it for the left side. Now, here in the middle section, there are two incredibly important settings. The first one is the anti aliasing method. I use MSAA. I tried FXAA and SMAA, but they give me a lot of flickering. Distant objects uh, with FXA uh, or SMA are super flickery. It just doesn't work for me. MSAA 
clear and stable and sharp picture. Now, the I, I use four examples, go more if you can. It does take a performance toll. And uh, filter wise, I they, they all look pretty good. I started off with simple, it looked good. Then I moved to sharp. It's not that different. Uh, but yeah, I would go either simple or sharp, but you can test this to see which one you like the most. But MSAA is a must pick because the other two with the Quest 3, with my system, tons of flickering. I have a shadow maps and cloud, cloud shadows on. I want my shadows to be on because they add to the immersion. Um, so object self-shadowing is also on. Dynamic objects, second most important setting, you want that off. Huge performance increase uh, with dynamic, dynamic objects off. And uh, net shadow maps on. Walls, I don't really care about walls, shadows. Have it on if you can run it. And if you like it, um, I don't need it. It's off for me. Number of lights, three. I use the 8P filter, PCF 8P. Uh, cube maps, zero for both. Shader quality, you're gonna want high detail if you can run it. Uh, go at least medium, but with my system, high, perfect, no frame drops. Um, eye obstruction, this is uh, completely unrelated and you can run whatever you prefer. Um, and then finally, for the settings on the right, I like my trees to look good because I don't want the X uh, trees. So two pass trees is on, high quality trees is on. Cockpit mirrors uh, on because I want to be able to see the mirrors in the cockpit. That's because I find it way more immersive. I don't want the mirrors to be black. However, to gain some performance out of those mirrors, um, I turn off higher detail. It's not necessary, at least not for me. Again, if you can, go for it, but I'd rather get the frames uh, than the mirror quality. Um, headlights, I have that on high detail, uh, more immersion, headlight on track and mirrors on, virtual mirror on, of course, motion blur, you want that to be off, absolutely. SSR off, and then finally you want sharpening, HDR, uh, video memory swap high resolution and 2048 cars so that the cars look gorgeous um, the cars especially look super sharp and you don't want SSAO distortion heat or, or heat haze uh, because uh, in my opinion they're completely unnecessary and you lose out on performance without really gaining much on looks and that's it guys if you follow these steps and you tweak the settings in these various places at least with a system that is at least equivalent to mine uh, or better, you end up with a very smooth, clear, non-flickery and as good looking as possible VR experience. And uh, I highly recommend the settings. I also hope that you can now tweak these settings to your liking and hopefully this video helped you understand that. Or, for example, if you have like a system that's not as good as mine, maybe slightly worse, or if you have a system that's uh, better, that you can tweak up or tweak down to try and extract as much performance and good quality as possible. And that's it, guys. My goal was to give you a guide that isn't too nerdy, that isn't too difficult, um, and to make this as quick and easy to get set up whilst giving you um, some information so that you can understand things on your own a bit as well. I really hope that I managed to achieve that. If you think that I did, please consider liking the video, consider subscribing, let me know your thoughts in the comments, and most importantly, if you want to see me race in VR, I upload race videos basically every week, or at least I try to upload them every week. Uh, so make sure you subscribe for race videos and other sim racing videos, and uh, without further ado, I wish you a great week, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care, guys.